So if we look at ESL, electronic system level uh, effort, what needs to be done? Well, there's really four main things that need to be done. One is behavioral synthesis, which means taking a design from the behavioral level at least down to a gate level description. Again, a behavioral level doesn't concern itself with clocks, doesn't concern itself with implementation. It write, a behavioral level description is like a programming language description where there's inputs, there's outputs, there's an algorithm, but how that's implemented with state machines, with clocks, with NANs, with NORs, timing, all of that is irrelevant. Now the, so the first thing is behavioral synthesis. Now Synopsys had at some point a behavioral synthesis program that would take a behavioral description and synthesize down to a lower level gate, gate level description. My understanding is that the tool worked very well. However, it worked on very constrained designs. In other words, if your design already met the constraints that the tool was useful for, then it did a very good job. But if your design was a generic design, um, you know, didn't meet the constraints that, that the behavioral synthesis program had, the synthesis did a very poor job and sometimes didn't work at all. Eventually the product was dropped. It, it's no longer supported. So there's a technology that still uh, has not been perfected. Then there's hardware software partitioning. This seems to be perhaps the biggest problem in ESL. And again, companies have solutions. How to take a high level description and figure out automatically, perhaps with user input, but still fairly automatically, which part goes into hardware and which part goes into software. Again, the tools that exist have very, uh, very specific constraints. That may not be a bad thing, by the way. I think the constraints are very good. Synopsis was able to uh, create a product and put constraints, but the constraints were such that 90% of the designs could easily be put, could, could be put into a format that met those constraints. So the issue is, if there are constraints, uh, either can most designs be put into uh, a format that meets those constraints, or uh, is the market big enough such that if only 10% of the designs meet those constraints, is that still enough market to uh, sell the product and make a profit? Uh, the third thing is hardware synthesis, which I've talked about. The fourth thing, which sometimes gets overlooked, I believe, is software synthesis. In other words, how do we, once we've partitioned the design, we need to make sure that we're designing at a high enough level such that software comes out of it. Uh, in other words, uh, usable software, compilable software. I think that a lot of the efforts going on right now assume that the description starts out with some kind of software and then simply the software section gets compiled. In my vision, what really needs to be happening is if we have a high level description, then it has to be a very high level description in order to include hardware and software. It needs to be partitioned, at least with the effort that I'm describing here, partitioned into something that can, that can be synthesized, that whereby the hardware description can be synthesized, and something whereby the software description at this high level can be synthesized into something at a lower level. These are all very difficult problems. And of the four, only one has been uh, solved to the point where it's in use and it's, it's, it's well done and well understood. So the next slide shows my uh, view of what's been happening with uh, ESL. A lot of the ESL companies, again, there have been a lot of startups coming out of universities uh, and other places getting money, getting investment, and a lot of them have simply been bought and their products cannibalized or they uh, went bankrupt and are no longer in existence. So what's going to happen? Well, here's my vision of the future. This is somewhat different than uh, what others see, and uh, time will tell uh, which vision is correct. But my vision is that we have a high level, so we start with a high level software description. Basically, if you think about software, software defines the operation of a system. And so you can really define everything by the software, but perhaps not in today's language. The idea is to create higher level statements that are part of the software. Okay, so you have a high level description in software, and then you 
synthesize that down to a low-level description. So for example, it may be C code plus uh, higher level statements, and it gets synthesized down to pure C code. But then a tool can go through and find all the hardware that's, ne that's necessary. So for example, obviously a processor is going to be necessary to run software. But the user, you'll see there's user input. The user can input what are the uh, performance constraints, and that will help determine which processor needs to be used. Also, it can search for drivers and see, for example, oh, this software uses a, uh, ether, has an Ethernet driver or Ethernet connection. Therefore, we need to have an Ethernet uh, hardware. It may say that it's doing a fast Fourier transform. Thereby, we need a coprocessor, a DSP coprocessor, or what's needed is a uh, piece of logic that is specifically designed to do a fast Fourier transform. It may go through and find some functionality that it doesn't know how to uh, implement in hardware. And then the user has the choice of saying, implement that in hardware. Or here is a block of, sorry, implement that in software. Or the user can say, here is a block of hardware. Take my word for it that it performs this function. And so in my view, there's no longer hardware and software partitioning. And uh, there's not a lot of the other issues. There's really soft, high level software software synthesis to a lower level, and then simply uh, what I wouldn't call partitioning, but a simple, uh, relatively simple effort for software to go through, for a tool to go through the software code, find the dependencies on hardware, and place that hardware together onto a chip. So that's my description. We'll see which one is true. Uh, time will tell. I hope that I'm the right one, but I certainly may not be. But in conclusion, I will leave you with the words of Criswell from uh, the famous movie, Plan 9 from Outer Space. He says, we are all interested in the future, for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. Thank you. <laughs>